looking over into the next dispensation. That's where I'm going. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with Him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstrott. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. Colossians chapter 4, verse 3, with all praying that God would open unto us a door of utterance. Say, a door, a door. Of, utterance. of utterance. To speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. So here, Paul is saying, pray for me that God would open, say open, open. a door of utterance. What do you suppose a door of utterance is made out of? It's a door, mm -hmm. say it's a door, it's a door. that you go through mm -hmm. by saying words. Yes. That's what a door of utterance is. Mm -hmm. It's not a door of wood, it's not a door of glass, it's a door of words mm -hmm. spoken. Say it's a door, it's a door of, words of words spoken. spoken. And then he says that, that I may make it manifest. What's he making manifest? That door. Mm -hmm. He's saying, pray for me that I may make this door manifest to you so that you can walk through it. How do you suppose you walk through a door of utterance? By speaking. Say, I walk through it, walk through it. By, speaking. by speaking. It's a door of utterance. Words, you must speak. If you don't speak the words, mm -hmm. you can't go through a door of utterance. Right. Now, this is Bible language. We read that, right? Yes. Out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's not just something I made up. It's a door of utterance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? We are nearing the end of this dispensation. Can you agree with me on that? And it's certainly not the beginning. And at some point, some of us begin to see over into the next dispensation. We begin to not only see it, but we begin to experience it. It's always been the case you have certain forerunners that begin to step over into it and you always have those who are called to preach it because you can't step over into it without a door of utterance say a door of utterance, door of utterance. we're at the end of this dispensation and the other dispensation is presenting itself to us and we are about to step over into it and in order to do that someone mm -hmm. has to preach it and have a door of utterance that takes us there yes are you here does this make sense yeah. yep. those who do preach it are always criticized by the rest mm -hmm. those who are not going on mm -hmm. So we're talking about a dispensational shift can you see that mm -hmm. you get to the end of one dispensation and then you have to shift over into the next dispensation yeah. just like you used to have to shift a car to go into the next gear to to go faster mm -hmm. for those of us who have to preach and get to preach this new dispensation there's also a dispensational shift in your ministry you're not going to be doing the same things that you did in the last dispensation does that make sense mm -hmm. John the Baptist showed up before Jesus came and began baptizing people they didn't do that before it was something new mm -hmm. 
are you here yeah. and he was the forerunner to the next dispensation in fact Jesus came up to him and said we must fulfill all righteousness so that we can get into this dispensation and they did and he did and so there's a dispensational shift mm -hmm. and then there is a shift in ministry that goes along with the shift in the dispensations yeah all right a change in the way we do things well that's not the way we do it at our church mm -hmm. probably not now let's look at a very familiar verse of scripture by way of reference Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 after this manner therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name sound familiar yep. thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven mm -hmm. give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen, mm -hmm. amen. but here this is jesus in jesus's dispensation mm -hmm. say jesus's dispensation. jesus's dispensation he was saying this to his disciples and and everybody else this wasn't just to his disciples this was this was him speaking to a crowds of people mm -hmm. and he said to pray to the father in heaven none of these people you can get mad at me if you want none of these people were born again all of these people were jews and they knew god as their father and if you go back into the scriptures and they'd say oh god is our father so he wasn't bringing some massive revelation to them at this point he's just saying pray to god the father and they understood what he was talking about yeah. but this was pre jesus's death burial and resurrection and sending the holy ghost which started the holy ghost dispensation so none of these things get this straight none of these things that he said were to people that were in the dispensation you are in today which is the Holy Ghost dispensation not even in the dispensation that you are in let alone at the end of this dispensation mm -hmm. so do you suppose that this prayer and the context of this prayer would change from our standpoint John chapter 7 39 but this spake he Jesus of the Spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified this verse of Scripture is speaking about another dispensation that Jesus was not in and none of the disciples were in at the time when Jesus was with them because the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified not the Holy Ghost dispensation Jesus was not in the Holy Ghost dispensation Jesus had to come and do everything he did so that we could get into the Holy Ghost dispensation in fact he said if I don't go away the comforter will not come well he went away and the comforter did come and now we are in the Holy Ghost dispensation yes. but we're not just in it we're at the end of it so things are beginning to change are you here yes so in the Holy Ghost dispensation the on earth as it is in heaven remember that prayer we read mm -hmm. should look different to us praying God's will to be in manifestation on earth as it is in heaven would look much different to us and likewise there should be a considerable shift in ministry to bring that about now mind you you don't have to go with me in this but I'm going here 
so there are some of us that are sent ones with a message and through doors of utterance we establish the new and then we move into it and the ministry changes everybody wants to do it the way they did it before everyone wants to go back to so and so revival and do it the way it was back then going back to the past and doing it the way you did it in the past does not ever take you to the future we have doors of utterance that we go through here's an example speaking the words I worship you Holy Ghost walking through that door by saying you become something you weren't before you become and have become a Holy Ghost worshiper something you weren't before and if true wouldn't it indicate that everything else would be different over there and he the Holy Ghost abides with you forever it's different mm -hmm. he transforms you from one thing to the next thing from one listen from one dispensation to the next dispensation and he abides with you forever second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit now when in this dispensation now the Lord is that spirit the Holy Ghost and where the Spirit of the Lord is or where the Spirit is Lord mm -hmm. there is Liberty there is freedom freedom to do something you couldn't do mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. verse 18 but we all now that the Spirit is Lord and we found that liberty with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are what changed, changed. worshiping him changes you we are changed into the same image from glory to glory from one dispensation to the next dispensation this is how you enter into it mm -hmm. please hear me even as by the Spirit Lord we are changed say we are changed, we are changed. worshiping him the Spirit Lord your speech changes your thinking changes you changes you begin the process of walking with him by saying words and that leads you into something new can you see this is something completely new yeah. so dispensational change corresponding ministry change say corresponding, corresponding. Ministry, change. ministry change if the ministry doesn't change then you not change it I hope you're ready for this would you pray for someone to get healed now stay with me on this all of the things that I've said and I'm not denying all of the verses of Scripture that tell us to pray for somebody to get healed we've done all of that mm -hmm. we're talking about at the end of this dispensation and going over into the next dispensation in the context of that would you pray for someone to get healed healing is available to everyone in this dispensation bought and paid for by Jesus stripes you were healed right yes. and so if healing is available to us in this dispensation it is shouldn't we all be healed by now at the end of this dispensation yes so stay with me all right I'm looking over into the next 
dispensation and the ministry changes that it requires to go there that's where I'm going and what Hebrews calls the book of Hebrews mm -hmm. not all the Hebrews <laughs> and what the book of Hebrews calls powers of the world to come or like I like to say powers of the WTC <laughs> say powers, powers of the world, of the world to, come. to come that would be the age to come the dispensation to come are you here mm -hmm. ministry shifting from this dispensation to that and I have to ask myself now that we're here am I going to go on Hmm. yes <laughs> what if people criticize you and don't like it take a number <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on say let us, let us. go on unto perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God of the doctrine of baptisms of the laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment verse 3 and this we will do if God permit verse 4 for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened tasted of the heavenly gift made partakers of the Holy Ghost tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come mm -hmm. here it says in verse 1 let us go on and he ends this with verse 5 powers of the world to come so what are we going on unto the powers of the WTC <laughs> the powers of the world to come let us do it let us go on you know shame on you for trying to stop us from going on now there is no shortage of sick people did you know this mm -hmm. they're everywhere you have whole industries that have created job security based on keeping people sick <laughs> doctors hospitals insurance companies it's ridiculous mm -hmm. when by Jesus stripes you were healed this should be the dominant situation in the church mm -hmm. but you go into almost any church and you go for a healing line or say I'm gonna pray for the sick and the whole church empties out and comes up front mm -hmm. boo I've seen it over and over again mm -hmm. shouldn't be no shortage of sick people that's just in the church forget about the world mm -hmm. they're all sick mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. do you know where there is a shortage of sick people heaven. in heaven not one person there is sick mm -hmm. see not one. not one the world to come now a power of the world to come would not be healing there's no need for healing in the world to come everyone is healed mm -hmm. in this dispensation you should already be healed we're moving over to the next one and there is no healing in heaven mm -hmm. argue with me all you want nobody needs to get healed in heaven right. if you're in heaven you're already healed That's right. and you don't get sick there's no healing in heaven but what there is there is a superior force called youth renewal or everlasting life and that's what keeps everyone healthy and healed and young Amen. it's a continuing force and it's superior to healing it's a power of the world to come youth renewal takes you back to before sickness even happened yes. as if it's not a thing is sickness a thing in heaven 
youth renewal takes you back there everlasting life keeps you there it's one in the same youth renewal and everlasting life <sighs> there's a, a shortage of sick people in heaven yeah. so healing could not be a power of the world to come mm -hmm. are you getting this mm -hmm. so if I'm ministering my ministry is changing listen my ministry is changing if I'm ministering in the powers of the world to come I'm not going to be ministering healing I will be ministering youth renewal which takes people back to before sickness began mm -hmm. now when we look to the words that Jesus said pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven we have a different context to put it in that they didn't have am i ministering healing well they do get healed mm -hmm. but i'm not ministering healing i'm ministering a power of the world to come mm -hmm. i would be ministering youth renewal mm -hmm. stop praying for healing mm -hmm. start believing for youth renewal again what is it like in heaven no sickness say no sickness. no sickness which means no healing healing is not a power of the world to come are you mad at me no. youth renewal ministering youth renewal and the substance of everlasting life which is a power of the world to come supersedes all sickness and disease it supersedes all healing power it's a greater power called youth renewal and it'll put any condition back pre before it ever occurred or came on anyone garden-esque I will say just like the garden garden of Eden garden-esque how many sicknesses were in the garden None. you could count them on less than one hand <laughs> youth renewal and everlasting life is a far superior force it is something that is a wash in heaven it's everywhere that's why sickness can't get in say sickness, sickness. Can't, can't get in, get in. Get in. and it supersedes <laughs> healing in fact it precedes it and Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 9 remember the former things of old for I am God and there is none else I am God and there is none like me well there you go verse 10 declaring the end from the beginning mm -hmm. say the end, the end. Yeah. From the, beginning. from the beginning what this says to me is the end is gonna be an awful lot like the beginning mm -hmm. this is how God does things mm -hmm. what was the beginning health prosperity the Garden of Eden was the beginning that's where it all began mm -hmm. and then he says the end is gonna be just like the beginning mm -hmm. well somebody's got to enter into it mm -hmm. and here he says declaring the end from the what is declaring speaking. speaking it's a door of utterance opened unto us now the ultimate turning back of time for you and me would be the garden the garden of Eden mm -hmm. or like I said garden-esque no sickness yeah but you, you, you then I would I would be a lot younger than one before I was born well I think you're misunderstanding what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. he turns the time back for you to be like that yes he can make you younger obviously and he can turn back the time in your physical body to before where a sickness began giving you a problem mm -hmm. but I'm talking about dispensationally he's taking you back to before sickness and disease well that's where we're heading Joel chapter 2 verse 1 blow ye the trumpet in Zion 
sound an alarm in my holy mountain and let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord comes and it is nigh at hand when would the day of the Lord be the end of this dispensation right yeah it is nigh at hand when would nigh at hand be it's about there mm -hmm. verse 2 a day of darkness and of gloominess a day of clouds and thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains a great people and a strong there hath not been ever the like neither shall there be any more after it even to the years of many generations verse 3 a fire devours before them and behind them a flame burneth the land is as the garden of eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness yea and nothing shall escape them what is the land as before them the garden. the garden of eden that's what they're seeing that's what they are entering into that's what the door of utterance is opening up unto them is there sickness and disease in the garden of eden no. therefore is there healing in the garden of eden no it's not there no are you all right with this mm -hmm. what is there youth renewal everlasting life Joy. all right well that's where they were headed that's where we are headed yeah. it's talking about us and you are going to before now understand this the garden of eden is before sickness began how did sickness come into the earth it came in by sin it came in by death mm -hmm. and then sickness developed from there mm -hmm. pre-sickness was in the garden so when he quickens you with youth renewal he's quickening you yes younger in age but he's quickening you to before sickness began to the garden of eden garden-esque mm -hmm. are you getting this yeah. so as we get closer to this the end of this dispensation and the beginning of the next ministry has to change with it and i'm beginning to not pray for healing for people but to have their youth renewed and everlasting life quicken them are you seeing this yes. you don't need to be healed you need to have your youth renewed in that part of your body you don't need to be healed you need to have your youth renewed in that part of your body I hope you heard that that's where we're at the land is as the Garden of Eden before them I pray this mm -hmm. I minister this and I will not criticize those who would continue praying for healing but the dispensation is shifting can you hear it mm -hmm. And my ministry must shift with it power of the world to come and as such I will no longer be holding prayer lines for healing youth renewal covers it all takes you back to before it ever happened you don't get healed when you get to heaven when you get there you are healed there you are healed you don't get there and there's some kind of healing line and you don't need healing now what you need is your youth renewed mm -hmm. and this we will do if God permit Amen. Holy Ghost I thank you that you are moving us on and we can do all of the things that you are opening up to us through this door of utterance we commit to walking through it and being changed and being quickened by your youth renewal and your everlasting life we thank you for it in jesus name amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me 
Holy Ghost, I worship you. You are the living God. All things in heaven and on earth belong to you. I thank you that I walk in the abundance of all good things right now in Jesus' name. Amen. The Father is in heaven. Jesus at his right hand. Joe.